The video was prepared especially for the Akakazian channel. Greetings, friends. In today's video, we will look at a very interesting Soviet device that many of you might have had at home and will figure out how it works. It all started on a sunny day. As usual, I was browsing through ads and came across a very interesting offer. A seller in a neighboring city was selling a Vega 7 voltage stabilizer. Looking at the photo, I really liked the device and I decided to buy it. The voltage stabilizer showed signs of life, and when I bought it, I heard the 50 Hz harmony of iron and the flickering of a neon bulb. Why is this device needed? A voltage stabilizer is necessary to maintain the nominal voltage value in the outlet. Since it is Soviet, it is set to maintain 220 volts, with the option to switch to a 127 volt mode. That is, if the nominal voltage value fluctuates at the input of the stabilizer, it will hold steady at 220 volts at the output. Of course, this is all valid within certain limits, which are specified in the user manual. In the case of the Vega 7, this range is from 150 to 250 volts. Well, let's take it apart and see what's inside. Inside you won't find even a single transistor nor any printed circuit board. The stabilizer is ferroresonant, and the circuit includes two inductors and a capacitor, forming a resonant circuit as well as an auto transformer. The winding of the inductor and auto transformer is made of aluminum wire with lacquer insulation. Perhaps that's why the device has lasted almost 40 years and no one has scrapped it for non ferrous metal. And judging by its condition, it has been lying in a shed recently. The solder has blackened and dried out with cobwebs and dirt. In general, I carefully disassemble and clean everything, and then I'll put it back together. In the meantime, let's figure out how a ferroresonant voltage stabilizer works. Let's start with a transformer. A regular, familiar transformer which has a primary winding connected to the outlet and a secondary winding from which we draw a voltage. These two windings are not electrically connected to each other and the energy we draw from the secondary winding is taken from the magnetic flux created by the primary winding in the iron core. And it's intuitively clear that the more energy that needs to pass from the primary winding to the secondary, the larger the cross-section of the magnetic core should B. Therefore, the more powerful the transformers, the larger they are. Let's return to the voltage stabilizer. Let's refer to the illustration from Yegorov's electronics textbook. The network voltage reaches a certain winding, which creates a magnetic flux. And here we have a resonant circuit, made of a capacitor and a nonlinear choke. Why nonlinear? Because the magnetic core in it is saturated, and changes in the flux within certain limits do not affect the voltage indicators on it. This process can be roughly illustrated with a glass. If you pour more water into the glass than it can hold, the excess water will spill out. Similarly, in a ferroresonant stabilizer, the excess energy will simply dissipate as humming. It's clear that a saturated magnetic core will hum and heat up, which users of such voltage stabilizers have observed. However, the reliability of such devices is extremely high. By avoiding overheating, these stabilizers will outlast your children and grandchildren, as there is essentially nothing in them that can break. But let's take a look at the Vega 7 schematic. It contains an auto transformer and two chokes. Choke L2 is precisely that, saturated nonlinear choke. Voltage is taken from it, and capacitors are connected to it. However, the voltage is not taken directly, but from the auto transformer. Thanks to this, by changing the position of this fuse, you can change the stabilization voltage from 220 to 127 volts. In the 127 volt mode, the point of voltage supply in the auto transformer changes. In one position, it is close to. The output in another position, the voltage is reduced because the auto transformer winding is powered from the edge. And since the outputs of the auto transformer winding are brought outside, the stabilization voltage can be adjusted. All these complexities are necessary to increase the efficiency of the stabilizer and to simplify assembly and adjustment within the factory. Let's connect our stabilizer through a laboratory auto transformer, which will allow us to change the input voltage of the network. 
We'll plug in the required load in the form of a light bulb and use an oscilloscope to look at the signals at different points in the circuit. Here's the sine wave at the input. Right now I've set it to 220 volts. Here's the signal on the oscillatory circuit. And this is how the signal looks at the output. Now let's adjust the voltage a bit. This is how the signal looks at the output, with an input voltage of 160 volts. And on the oscillatory circuit, we get this kind of sine wave. With an increased voltage of 240 volts, this is the signal at the output. And this is on the oscillatory circuit. It's an interesting device, reliable like a Swiss watch. My personal advice is, if you have such a stabilizer, to get it in order, clean it up, and put it on a shelf. Sooner or later, it might come in handy, and you can put it to use. But if you've firmly decided to take it apart, you can use the massive chokes for building an LC filter and the auto transformer. By carefully testing all its windings and powering it correctly, connecting to different terminals, for example, using a rotary switch, you can obtain different voltages. I'll repeat, destabilizers don't have value as scrap metal as they mainly contain iron and a little aluminum inside. There's no copper here. I hope that with the release of this video, the number of stabilizers from the great era being barbarically dismantled will decrease. If you liked the video, don't forget to support it with a like and a comment. This helps the channel and motivates us to make new interesting videos. Take care of yourself and your loved ones. This was Andre with you. Goodbye.